Hello and welcome to episode 42 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we'll be talking about that the shift to cloud computing continues to gain momentum with nearly half of application spending going on demand within the next four years. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips on cloud computing. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here, and this is a great topic. I have a lot to say about this. Excellent. Well, I will let you take the stage very shortly. I've got an opening question for you. What is the average tipping point for most companies within cloud computing, Dave? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really going to be, um, you know, uh, the point where, you know, probably... I think 30% of their existing IT workloads are, are moving into the cloud. I mean, what's going on is multi multiple dimensions in the industry right now. Number one, the software companies, the enterprise software companies, the big ones, are spending most of their R&D dollars on cloud-based systems. And so they're enabling their software in the cloud, you know, versus uh, working with traditional on-premise systems. And I think that the enterprises are seeing that, and therefore they're investing in the cloud-based software because that's where they feel you know, they're going to get the love and care for their software providers going forward. And and I think that uh, when we, you know, hit about a 30% to 40% uh, saturation point within most enterprises, that'll be the tipping point where the majority of systems there, you know, will be cloud related just because the new stuff, the work, the stuff IT is concerned with um, uh, versus the on-premise stuff is just going to be their, going to be their core focus. And I think that's going to be uh telling uh, because we need to think about org structures and operational systems and things like that. And and many of the enterprises out there, even though they'll be mostly in cloud, because the market's pushing them there over time, say the next three or four years, they're, they're ill prepared in order to, you know, kind of run that kind of environment because they're going to end up with a very complex environment, on-premise systems, you know, cloud-based systems, they're going to be investing their money and time in cloud-based systems and not necessarily have a core strategy for how they're going to be deployed. And so the tipping point is going to be the point where the confusion exceeds stability within these organizations. I think that's the best way to do it. I mean, the complexity within these systems is going to be immense and just we're going to find that uh, we're just too overwhelmed with the number of systems, both cloud-based systems and on-premise systems that we're managing. And we're going to have to figure out a strategy for making that happen. And I would say, I, I would even say to global 2000 enterprises moving in that direction, they're finding they're hitting the tipping point. They'll probably slow down until they figure out how to manage that complexity going forward. You're going to get in trouble very quick. Yeah, a very good point there. That confusion over stability. I think that's a, a massive uh, point there, not only from you know where you're coming from, but also from a talent hire point of view as well. I mean, there's a huge pain point around that you know, confusion stability point. But I'd love to hear from you more about that and, and any real case environment studies you've got that you could share on the show today of, of that confu confusion versus stability? Yeah, I mean, I have some friends of mine that work for uh, large organizations uh, in the government and outside the government uh, where they're just hitting the tipping point early. So they're very innovative companies uh, in the financial industry and in the government high tech industry that started moving into cloud a lot faster than other organizations. And suddenly they realized that their on-premise systems weren't being replaced by cloud-based systems. They were in addition to, for the most part. And so they may move a thousand workloads into the cloud, but they may only decommission 500 workloads on-premise. And so we still have to deal with the 500 workloads that remain on-premise, as well as the thousand workloads that remain in the cloud. And I don't think it really accounted for that. They always thought uh, cloud computing was gonna be a, net, a zero sum game ultimately, and the ability to kind of have one system in the cloud replace those things on premise. But the reality is we had to divide systems up. We had to uh, refactor systems. We had to play a lot of games to get things into the cloud. And their level of complexity has hit a tipping point where there are just so many services to manage and so many pieces of technology to deal with that they, they really can't um, accommodate those things with the current staff and the budget that they have. And obviously, if they had an unlimited budget, they could hire many more people and buy many sophisticated tools and hire consultants to come in and solve some of their issues. But obviously budgets are limitations. And so people are ending up in a crisis right now. 
and they're trying to retrofit and figure out the complexity. And that's not necessarily something that's easy to do. It's analogous to changing the tires on a truck as it's rolling down the street. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And look, it leads us on nicely actually to your uh, your your top three tips around this topic. So it'd be great if you could uh, share them, Dave. That'd be great. Yeah. Again, keep your eye on the business cases uh, that are there. There has to be something something reason compelling reason why we're moving in that direction. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of people that are doing this thing that I've been calling for years, managed by magazine. And of course, we don't have any magazines around anymore, so it's managed by blog posts. But the ability to kind of chase the hype. And so, the reality is, I think people are chasing the hype train it's red hot right now and they're starting to move in whatever direction they think that the minions are moving and whatever they hear at a conference perhaps even what they hear me speak about or write about and the reality is that you have to have a business case to justify any movement to technology going forward and why there may be some very cool technologies out there that may indeed add value you have to ask some tough questions as to what it represents for your organization and what problems it's able to solve. I don't know how many times I'm having discussions with people that have already made up their mind in terms of buying technology and moving in a different direction where it's completely contraindicated for the workloads that they have. They're not necessarily looking at the core requirements or missing security and missing compliance, things like that. Uh, make sure to consider the organization's culture. Um, you know, I'm reminded that Jack Nicholson, um, you know, a few good men uh, line where he says you can't handle the truth, well, some people can't handle the cloud. Uh, they just don't have a culture that's able to adopt and accept utilization of on-demand resources. And so the reality is that if IT leadership is pushing cloud computing upon an organization that's not necessarily set up to ad accept it or even uh, leverage it, that doesn't mean they don't want to leverage it. That just means they don't have the skills and the talent to make it happen and they're underfunded for moving in that direction. Uh, that's a recipe for failure and it's something that really should be and it's easy to easy to fix i mean have people call you up or you know go get some decent training or put a training plan together and get the right talent within the organization to solve their problems i, I see that being the, the largest deficit going forward is we're, we're just not having the people on premise that are able to kind of take these companies to the next level they're not willing to hire consultants they're not willing to kind of pay the money they need to get the talent that they need and therefore they're going to be limited in what they're able to do Great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks very much. 100%. 100%. <laughs> I haven't said that for a while, actually. So thanks thanks for that. Um, I was going to actually build on that top three tips because you didn't mention something very interesting. That, you know, it's the clients that, that can't handle the truth when it comes to cloud, or sorry, can't handle the cloud. At what point do you recognize that? With your experience and you going in and, and talking to clients and trying to work out solutions and, you know, putting teams together, et cetera, at what point do you realize the client can't actually handle the truth or handle the cloud or, or both? Well, massive amounts of failed projects would be uh, one metric um, uh, that we see. Normally they, they run into it themselves. And so if I'm, if I'm called in to deal with a client that's uh, uh, not necessarily um, you know, leveraging their organization in the right direction, they've already seen the pain, uh, you can see it coming. And, and advise organizations to move forward, and some of them correct th things in flight and starts moving in the right direction. But for the most part, people are very much into trial and error, and so they're willing to, you know, accept failure, which is fine. You know, fail fast and all that sort of thing when you move into the world of IT. However, um, ultimately, you can really see this coming, you know, miles and miles away, and you need to kind of re-engineer your organization to accept the technology. Um, the great thing now is that, you know, I work with great org transformation teams and, you know, they understand more about how to change these organizations over time, which is something, you know, skill sets that typical IT consultants don't have. And I think that uh, you're going to have to get together with the tax people, the finance people, the recruiting people, you know, the talent management people, the training people uh, in order to get something that's consistent that's going to make you successful each and every time. That's the ultimate answer. Unfortunately, we kind of live in a real world where, you know, things aren't necessarily funded that need to be funded and we're making lots of mistakes out there. And some of them are pretty costly. And uh, I don't like to see it, but we, we have a tendency to kind of work that way. Yeah, it must be. You know, it, the thing is, when you start asking questions and people start delving into cloud, it's a bit of a rabbit hole, isn't it? It, it really does filter out through so many branches of the business, you know, 
sort of under that layer of what the business is supposed to be. And I think that's key that they, they cover all bases with that. And, you know, for some people, it's just they just can't handle the truth because they just don't have the capabilities in the back end to actually roll out what they need. Right. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a better summary in the way I put it. And say ultimately, you're just you're just not, uh, you know, there's a, there's a saying in the United States is whistling past the graveyard. You're not necessarily paying attention to the problems that are very relevant to other people that are seeing things that are that are that are problems, and uh, and ultimately that's a limitation of organizations. But by the way, cloud isn't the only thing that we're, we're dealing with in that. Any adoption of new technology, the adoption of the internet, the adoption of PCs, the adoption of distributed computing, the adoption of different distributed security and federated security mechanisms that we rolled out over the years, wasn't as big as cloud was as systemically changing as cloud uh, but we still saw the same pushback now after all these years it's you know perfectly fine as working in the organizations but you know the adoption could have gone a ton better you know ultimately in their uh, aligning the organization to the technology versus you know quickly having to uh you know change the technology and change the organization 10 times uh, before they got it right and I, I don't think that's something that's uh necessarily advantageous for your business yeah, absolutely right. It's just like it could be almost a disaster waiting to happen. Well, thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week, Dave. Very insightful. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And look, everyone, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We've got tons of videos on YouTube where David and I talk about, you know, very cutting edge cloud topics and, you know, sea level management things and training. So do check them out. I hope you find them interest. Uh, and, and also, you know, leave comments below in the box and uh, we'll get back to you. You can reach out to Dave, obviously, on Twitter and connect with us on Instagram and Facebook uh, and obviously YouTube, which is probably where you're watching this video so thanks for watching remember to like subscribe comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues and until next week thanks for watching